So, today it was, it's been linked that Nathan Collins is obviously at Stoke at the moment and he's came in this season and he's done really, really well. Um, I suppose he's, he's established himself in the first team this season. Last season, he was I know he was captain and stuff like that, but he didn't necessarily nail down a spot, whereas I think this season he has. And it looks like he's attracting all sorts of interest. And I know Manchester United were, were hot on him before as well. But I think um, you're looking at it now. Burnley are interested in buying them right now. And Arsenal are looking to buy them maybe in the future. But I think the fact that now Burnley have the cash and are ready to pay £10 million, it looks as though, and it's rumoured that Tarkovsky is on the way out. What are your thoughts? Because obviously we have Jimmy Dunn there. We have Kevin Long there as well. And they're not getting in at Burnley. So you'd wonder, is this, is this a, a signing worthwhile? Or... Would it be better if maybe Arsenal signed him and loaned him back to Stoke then for the remainder of the season and then maybe next season look to look to bring him through, you know? Because they, apparently they're looking for a replacement for Socrates when he leaves in the summer. Yeah, it's um, it's a tough one. I mean, you can look at it from Nathan Collins' development point of view as well as from the other Irish players that would be impacted. I mean, it's very young for him to be playing as a centre-half as it is. So I, I think most centre halves tend to come out through 23, 24. I remember even the likes of Richard Dunn, Shane Duffy. They didn't really establish themselves until they were into well, well into their twenties, early twenties, early to mid twenties. And uh, so Nathan Collins is doing incredibly well, and Stoke, the, the Stoke themselves had been on a great run of, of clean sheets, or not conceding too many goals, but they hadn't been winning too many games, and. Uh, I watched uh, quite a bit of their game against Watford yesterday, which was a bit of a disappointment. Stoke were much the better side, and uh, Watford effectively was a bit of a smash and grab. Well, Watford improved a bit in the second half, but somehow Watford went in at nil-nil and uh, very lucky, and then uh, got a penalty from Troy Deeney and then got a second goal that he set up. But uh, I think Stoke were very unfortunate to lose the game, but they they have been on a, a bad run. Uh, but defending very well. Nathan Collins, he's been playing really well. He had been linked before. So he's definitely one that has a a bright future in the Premier League. And uh, then the question is, from his perspective, should he go now? Um, I'd like to see him still play. And I would have a concern if he was to go at this stage. So maybe the Arsenal, to loan him back to Stoke, might be ideal. Um, if he goes to Burnley, will he start? I mean, they have they have me and Tarkovsky already now. I know you were saying that there, there's rumours or talk that he could be on his way, um, and I know he is actually highly rated. He's been in England England teams and everything, but um, so I, I don't see Nathan Collins going straight into the the Burnley first team. But as you say, they have money. There's a takeover. There's uh, they are still in a bit of a relegation battle, despite their win at Anfield. Um, so, I think if Nathan Collins was to go there, he'd probably just be back up for me and Tarkovsky. Um, I don't know if they're going to let him go. Maybe they're thinking of Tarkovsky going next summer. Um, I don't know, maybe he's going to go in January. I haven't actually seen the speculation or haven't um, seen too much. So then, if that's from Nathan Collins's perspective. Then you've got Kevin Long, who's currently the backup at Burnley, and he seems to me to have done really well when he's got the chance. Got a, got quite a uh, run of games uh, due to injuries, and uh, he did really well for Ireland as well when he came on. A bit unfortunate actually when he got his chance in the home game. Uh, was it against Wales? And uh, he he got injured and had to go off. But he, I mean, he came back again and. He's a very steady, solid centre half. He'll go in, no nonsense. He'll do a job for you. And uh, unfortunately, he would probably fall down the pecking order if Nathan Collins goes to Burnley. And then you've got uh, Jimmy Dunn, who's probably behind Kevin Long. And I think, though, I did see some speculation that he was being linked with some championship clubs, either on loan or um, possibly as part of a permanent transfer. It may be better for him because I don't think 
uh, that he's going to move up. It doesn't look like he's going to move up the pecking order in Burnley. So it's probably better for him and, and from an Irish perspective, being selfish, obviously, uh, if he played, if he moved to someone in the championship, I suppose we'll say Preston, the old reliable for an Irish player. Um, I don't know what their, who their centre-backs are actually and who they need. But um, yeah, it would be good if he moved somewhere and uh, got some game time. But for me, I, yeah, I, I think Nathan Collins has got a bright future ahead of him. But I'd like to see him uh, continue to play week in, week out for the moment anyway. I don't know. What do you think, Paul? Um, just, yeah, are you asking me this talk, the thoughts on Nathan Collins going there or on the rest of the lads? Yeah, well, and, and Nathan Collins, and it does have an impact on the other two lads as well if he does go to Burnley. Well, I think with Long, he's been there so long. Like he's been there ten years. He, I think he even joked himself that if he had a testimonial, he'd probably be on the bench himself. Um, so he did well after lockdown last season. When um, when the lock uh, after March when he came in, or sorry, in the end of the, the after the lockdown came in and, and his project restart, he done really well when he came into the team, and he was starting loads of games, and then. I don't know, maybe Ben Mee was injured or Tarkovsky or one or the other and he was forced to come in and play and he played really well and then Jimmy Dunn was starting to get a run of games but I think that was just down to injury and stuff like that I think they're just backups I think I, you know uh, Jimmy Dunn has been out so many times on loan already I think he's been out at Hearts and he's been out at another lower league team as well Shane. Sunderland as well I think he played for Sunderland for a while so. Yeah, and so so he's been out on loan a few times. I just don't, I just don't think for Jimmy Dunn it's going to work out there. I think if Nathan Collins went to Burnley, I just don't think it's the right time. Same as Jason Knight to Derby. I just don't think it's the right time for him to leave. You know, I think he'd be better suited getting game time at this age in his development of first team football. If it's in the Champions, so be it. Just let him develop. I think he's going to develop into a fine centre back. You know, you think of the centre backs that we have coming through. Like if Jimmy does, sorry, if Jimmy Dunn does go to another club and develop there that's another really good centre back we have coming through you add that with Conor Mass and Dara O'Shea Nathan um, Jimmy Dunn there's a fine you know load of centre backs coming through there but then the problem is you know Conor Mass and left QPR to get game time as well at Swindon so we do have young centre halves coming through we've never really had an issue with centre backs in terms of good centre backs that can come in but it's good that we have this backlog, but they all need to be playing because they're no use to anybody if they're not playing, you know, and everybody needs to be playing regularly. So, But I think if you're looking at the top of the list in terms of the centre-backs, I think you're looking at Collins and O'Shea as probably the, the best partnership you'll be looking for in the years to come. And you look at Dar O'Shea, once he got in, developed, and he went up the league and he went up to the Premier League with West Brom. And now you'd, you'd probably say that, no, Dar O'Shea would be in line to probably start come March because he's just been that good this season and when he came in and played for Ireland he looked really really good so there's positive signs there that if Nathan did stay at Stoke that he he could possibly be in the Ireland team by the end of the season maybe yeah he, he certainly could I mean he's playing he's playing really well and he, he's definitely one for the future I think he's somebody who's going I mean he's already playing as a centre half at this young age, which I said already is a really phenomenal achievement, and uh, it certainly looks like he's going to be around for a long time, and he, he's going to get a number of caps for us. I, I expect that he, he could well ha have a starting position. I know I've been saying the same about Darrow O'Shea, and you still have, well, you've John Egan, you've Shane Duffy, you've Kieran Clark still still around as well. Kevin Long, we mentioned, you know, so there's so many options there. But I would expect Nathan Collins to become a starter for the national team. Uh, maybe this year might be a bit soon, but certainly for the qualifiers for 2024. But but who knows about this year, because he is playing so well. And uh, the fact even that Arsenal are interested is definitely a, a good sign. But I don't see a 19-year-old, 20-year-old starting at a club like Arsenal in the Premier League week in, week out. Um, that might be a bit much. Bit much. So, are, are they looking more for the future? Um, so that would be my concern. Re, re Arsenal, and again with Burnley, he may go in as the first backup, and now maybe Tarkovsky. Maybe he's the replacement for Tarkovsky. I mean, Burnley are still very much a selling club, and if they've got a 
a, a defender uh, who's in such demand as James Tarkovsky, they, they they will probably take the money, but maybe not with the new owners. I don't know how much money. There seems to be quite a bit of money with the, the new owners in Burnley, so maybe not. Maybe they are just um, want to establish themselves in the Premier League and push on, become a... Instead of becoming, I think what they are is a bottom six Premier League side and Sean Dyche. In fact, they shouldn't even be in the Premier League with all due respects uh, to the size of the club and the budget they have. But Sean Dyche has done an incredible job uh, in an incredible situation to to keep them in the Premier League. And uh, But obviously they would need quite a bit of investment if they wanted to push on and move to the the next level which is probably at least mid-table uh i was going to say mid-table obscurity which can be a very good thing for a lot of clubs but um i suppose be comfortable in mid-table instead of being in a relegation battle yeah well i think you just with with that you're just going to have to see how it plays out and if the clubs do come in from and what what is the story there if it was my Choice, I would like to see Collins stay with where he is for now, at least to the end of the season, like Arsenal have said. Or maybe if Arsenal did put in a bid of £10 million and then loan him straight back to Stoke, I think that would be the ideal scenario for everybody. And then they could look at him in the pre-season, see if he's good enough, see if he could come into the team. And if not, then maybe loan him out again, get that another year under his belt, and then I'd say he'd be you know, willing and able to come into that team. But you just don't know. Like We're going on as if Arsenal is the Arsenal of old. They haven't been that Arsenal for a long, long time. And they do lack a real kind of hard, physical defender, but who can also play as well. Because I think he's a fine player. And he's, he's physical, he's big. You know, he's a, he's a threat in the opposition's box as well, like Shane Duffy. So, yeah, you you got to you got to look at it and be sensible as well. You want him to go somewhere where he's going to play football. You don't want him to just go somewhere where he's just going to be on the bench and, you know... Would he be any better than Rob Holding at this moment in time? I wouldn't say so at this moment in time. Could he be better than him? I think so, yes, definitely. But I think he needs a couple of years of more development under his belt before he goes. And the fact that like Stoke have made him captain and stuff like that, they really think highly of him you know, as well. So they, they have that as well. Yeah, so the, it, I mean, it, it, as you say, it is crucial that he keeps playing, keeps learning his trade, keeps playing week in, week out. And I think at this stage, Stoke City is probably the best for him. And Stoke aren't that far off the, the Premier League themselves next season. I mean, they, they have been on a bad run, but they're, they're only a few points off the playoffs. Now, I know yesterday's defeat by Watford, it was the same, it must be a crushing defeat because they played really well. They just couldn't score and uh, probably should have won the game. But uh, I wouldn't rule out Stoke, Michael O'Neill getting Stoke into the playoffs and uh, Stoke getting back to the Premier League, uh, which might be the ideal scenario to have Nathan Collins playing in the Premier League with Stoke City, where he's already established and already a crucial player for them. Yeah, they're only they're, they're five points off, but the uh, the teams above them have a game in hand, Bournemouth and uh, and Reading. But yeah, it, it, I mean, if a couple of results go their way, they're right they're right in the mix. So they just need a real strong end to the season. So they probably would want Collins to go if that is the case as well, you know. So uh, let us know your thoughts anyway in the comments on on that situation, and um, yeah, let us know what you think.